you know, during my playing days, that's long, long time ago, you know, my coach used to always say, don't talk. Make sure you talk with your foot. And that's what we've been taught, not to talk much with your mouth, but always talk with your foot. And that's what I've done last 35 years. So even after my retirement, you know, now people don't call me to play football because they only call me to speak. And this is something, <laughs> this is something, this is something which I've just started learning. Obviously, this is something which we go day to day life. And I don't know how many of you are here from Calcutta, Bengal. If you're from Bengal, you'll exactly know the passion of football there. You know, Bengal is dominated with three clubs. East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, and uh, Mahabadan. And it's just not clubs. It's a passion and the love for the club. And it's, it's a religion as well because, you know, if you look back, the, look back at the history, Mohan Bagan are the Bengalis, which are original Bengalis. East Bengal are the ones who later on come from Bangladesh and, you know, have come into Bengal. And Mohammedans obviously are, are uh, you know, a Muslim club. So, you know, when this teams play, it's just not about match, it's about passion, it's about your prestige, it's, it's everything. So, for a player to play where, you know, it's, it's, and if you go back at history as well, I'm sure, you know, uh, someone here from Bengal would know it. You know, this matches between East Bengal and Mohan Bagan, you've had people died on the stands fighting because it's so passionate. Whenever East Bengal Mohan Bagan played, I think entire Calcutta used to come stand still. And if you look at the history of these matches, it has been so aggressive, so passionate. And there have been a lot of lives lost because of clashes in these matches as well. So, you know, for a player to play and have that, uh, you know, demand from the fans to come and perform every day, and especially when you have a match against, when I, I, I started my career with East Bengal, and when you have a derby, which is like big match, you'll have thousands and thousands of supporters coming to your club tent and wanting you to win that match. You know, you've got, you've got to play against Mohan Bagan, and you have East Bengal supporters coming every day a week ago from uh, till the time, every day in thousands saying that, that this is the match you have to win. We can't let it. So that kind of passionate love they have and prestige it's involved. So for a player to really perform, there's a lot of pressure. And then you play, you win it. The next day, you'll see again supporters coming in and saying, no, now another match we want to win. So the expectation is always there. So you don't, you don't. And being a footballer and being a sports person, I think that this is something which I personally feel sports teaches you in life. You know, it's it, something which none other subjects can teach you. I think sports is something that really teaches you how to look forward to it. And you have a lot of good matches. You have, you know, matches which you prepare for months. I, when I signed for East Bengal, the club was known to not win Federation Cup, which is known as FA Cup. And we were not a good, we were a great team, but we never won FA, Federation Cup. And I came into the club, it had not won for quite many years. And I started playing it. And I played for East Bengal first three years. We just could not win. We had the best team in India that time. And still, despite that, we used to go all the way, prepare for six months, win all four matches, go to the final, and final somehow we lose. And then I decided I really need to win this Federation Cup. I went to one of the best teams that time again, JCT. And they had the best players. And you won't believe we did everything right again in the finals we lost. So sometimes you lose pre despite preparing for five, six years. But you don't give up. You come back again. And then finally when I came back to East Bengal, then I won it again. But uh, I think football and sports is something which you look forward to it. There are a lot of good moments. There are a lot of bad moments. But you always look forward. That's what I've learned playing football because I had great matches, I've had bad matches, but you go back, learn from your previous match, look forward and go on to win. Uh, so that's what it has happened. And for me, I think uh, that is how my life also, I think right now that's how I look into it. Uh, after football, uh, it's been challenging. I've gone into different things, tried doing a bit of business. There's been good and bad. There's been, been doing a bit of politics, but uh, I think that's how uh, you, know, you learn from from the spot and it keeps making me look forward and keep taking those challenges and fighting for it. No, I think if you played football for the last 35 years, then I think every day, you know, when you're a player, I think every day is, is a challenge for you. And you're challenging yourself because even training as well, not playing tournament and matches, even in training, you're just challenging opponents, you're challenging the defenders to come and you know, stop you and you want to score. 
So for me, every day, last 35 years is waking up in the morning, go and train, and even in training as well, you're fighting with the other striker to get into that position. You're trying to, you know, uh, defeat the defenders to score goals. So that challenge and hunger has always been there. And after retirement, it's so difficult to just sit at home and, you know, sometimes uh, play with their kids. But you like the challenges. And uh, you know, you're not, you, as a sports person in India, you're not well, you know, in terms of pre post-retirement. You don't plan much as such. So you're always looking at challenges and any challenges that comes in, you want to, you know, take it. And uh, I think that's how uh, sometimes without any plan, you just meet your friends and start doing some, some kind of business which you had no idea. And then suddenly after two years, you lost quite a bit of money. And then suddenly another thing is you go into politics has been passion. So you go into that without really knowing what entire political scenario is. So I think that hunger and challenge because, you know, I've, I've lived for 35 years. So now after retirement, I think uh, I'm trying to uh, obviously did not get much opportunities like you guys to come into some good business schools to learn about entire business and things like that. But <laughs> I think I'm just starting to learn, uh, you know, by meeting people, talking to them. Uh, so I think challenges is something which for me, it, it comes instantly. It's not been I decide and I do, but obviously it's not right in, in that way as well. Uh, so now I've been involved with, uh, because what I'm good at is I've just played football. So one thing what I've really done is uh, started Baiching Putia football schools, which is also a uh, thing which during my football career as a kid, we did not have that kind of uh, you know platform to really get nurtured and, uh, and trained and give you that platform. So it was important for me to you know give back something and also knowing that how difficult it is for kids from different parts of the country to get that platform training to become and guide and especially the guidance so that was the reason why i thought uh, bbfs was uh, important thing to give back and also to give that opportunity so I, it's it's done quite well uh, uh, i've been now last five years into politics i'm still trying uh, trying to succeed but that's something which uh, obviously you know, it's, it's a challenging thing because, as I said, you know, I, what I realize in politics is uh, in sports, you really get results with your own hard work and talent and dedication. But in politics, no matter how talented, how hard you work, your results are, you know, uh, in somebody else's hands. So in sports, you don't lose, lose to a good opponent. You'll always lose to a good opponent who's really worked hard. But in politics, you could lose to somebody, big liar, somebody who could lie and, you know, and do a lot of wrong stuff and you could still lose. So that's what I've learned. But uh, it is a challenge which, obviously, for me, I, I strongly feel that a lot of sports person and other celebrities who can, who, they should come into politics because I think a country requires uh, good, honest, dedicated people to run it. Sports person can bring that honesty and dedication to the society and can give back something. I think, um, you know, Jalak happened to me by accident, in fact. And, uh, you know, I was still a player and I was full-time player, professional player, playing with uh, one of the biggest club, Mohan Bagan, that time. And uh, one day I got a call and I answered the call and it was Leander Pace calling me. And he said, Bai Chung, I've got a great deal. I said, what? Uh, obviously, Leanda is a good friend. Uh, we come from the same town, Calcutta. And uh, Leander calls me up and says, I've got a great deal for you. I said, what is the deal? He said, I've got a reality show, dance show. I said, I'm not doing it. I don't know how to dance. Apparently, the deal was with Leander. He was supposed to do that reality show. <laughs> and then there was a tournament, tennis. Some grand slam came in. So he had to really, you know, uh, obviously, he had signed a contract. So to escape himself, he, s he promised Sony and the channels that I will get your gray, another talented sports person to come in. So that's how he <laughs> he's put my name. And he said, I've got your great talent, uh, great show. And you know, it's got good offer. You've got financially, the package is great. I said, what are the finances? He said, it's this, 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 which was really good, in fact. And he said, you don't, you don't know how to dance? I said, I don't know. So it's good. Then one dance, you'll come out. You, you'll still get that money. I said, I'm fine with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> And that's how Leander put me into this. And then, you know, the Sony channel came in. Then I had my uh, manager who worked out deal and I had to speak to the club. So I just thought, okay, two dance and then I'm out because obviously if you don't know how to dance, you're anyway going to be out. And I seriously did not know how to dance at all. So that's how I got into um, uh, Jalak. And uh, once I started, I, you know, things obviously were a little different because when I went in, then I realized that you can't actually come out. Because half the thing is through SMS as well. So you keep getting SMS, you have to stay back in the dance competition. <laughs> so, 
and I was hoping that India doesn't vote for me, and especially Northeast, you know, people there, once you're, somebody from Northeast comes in, they like, they get excited, oh, this is our guy, and we need to make him win. I'm requesting my people in Northeast, please don't vote, I need to get out, play football. <laughs> and the guys in Northeast are going on evening, 7 o'clock, they have the best time pass to watch Jalak and vote. <laughs> and here I was struggling. So that's how it happened, but uh, obviously as, as um, you know, Jalak went on, uh, then I think you could see that a lot of participants, other participants, for them, it, in fact, especially for a lot of TV actors, a lot of singers, it, it was a, something which they can make a career out of it because I never had intention of you know, winning Jalak and making a career in television or movies. That was never there. So then you realize how serious it is, and especially with my choreographer who was also an experienced choreographer. She was single mother then. And you start feeling for people because uh, for her it was a career. You know, the more I progressed, for her it was a career for her to make. And uh, then you start feeling and then you start obviously working hard, putting it, then people start watching you as well. Uh, and trust me, wherever I was traveling during those days in airports, you know, old ladies used to come and say, oh, you're Bhai Chung Bhutia, you're the dancer. I said, no, I'm a footballer. They said, no, no, you're a dancer. <laughs> so people started recognizing me more as a dancer than a footballer. All people watching Saas Bahu, you know, serials at home. So that's how I was noticed. And uh, I think, you know, then you start feeling, you start working hard for it. And uh, obviously the competition started growing. Then at a point, you could not come out as well because obviously you wanted to win for your uh, uh, choreographer. You wanted to also when, when I had my first dance, uh, it came on television, my family got so upset, believe me, they got so upset, my friends and family, they said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> why are you, why are you making joker of yourself in entire national television, you know? Like, that horrible it was, my first dance. And my family and friends are like, can you stop dancing? And I said, I, I'm trying to get out, but I can't. So it was that horrible, but uh, obviously with time, uh, and also because, Playing football, you start taking those challenges and you want to, you know, now you're trying to challenge and want to beat yourself or some opponent. So then that's how it started growing. And uh, with a bit of SMS and a bit of hard work, uh, we I went on to win. So that's how Jalak happened. But when it comes to Northeast, I'm sure people are aware sports is one of the biggest thing there and especially football. And uh, football, sports and music is something which every household would have somebody singing or playing sports. So you connect with that and football was really big as we grew up as well and uh, for me you know people keep asking me well, who was your role model when you started playing it wasn't you know during those 80s we never had televisions we never had newspaper coming to it uh, obviously cable or something very far off for us the role models during those days were the local footballers and in sikkim you know football was so big every village you went every town you went it was only football that was being played and we have this tournament, every tournament final, you'll have 15, 20,000 full packed stadium, you know, half the crowd outside the stadium wanting to get in towards that match. So that passion and that love really generated. And for us, the role models during those days were, you know, uh, local players. And for me to come and uh, once I got offered, uh, I got into professional football in, in first, my, my first club was East Bengal, and I came in at the age of 17. So as a young boy, did not really expect and did not know much about the kind of passion, fan following East Bengal had. So my thing was just come, play, have fun, enjoy, work hard was the main thing. And I did not really realize the kind of pressure. Later on, once you start playing, you realize how big a club it is, the kind of people really worship the club and you know they die for the club. And the results make them really, uh, re result of East Bengal really decides on people for the next one week, they stay happy for the next seven days or stay sad throughout. So that kind of passion they had. So it, there was not much pressure in terms of when I came as a 17-year-old boy. So for me to succeed uh, was obviously my priority. But what I re realized was with me settling down and doing well, I think it opened doors for a lot of Northeast fo northeastern footballers. Because, you know, northeastern footballers, I think f uh, the culture and the kind of people we are a bit impatient, especially if you're a sports person, you know, we, be we tend to become a little impatient. We don't like to be sidelined. We want to start playing. We want to get involved with everything. So I think a lot of players do, uh, before me had come and tried playing in clubs in Calcutta, but had not succeeded. So I think with my success, what it really happened was I think it gave a lot of confidence to a lot of young players in Northeast. And uh, when I came to Calcutta, 
uh, I think we had only one or two Northeast players playing in Calcutta, and not not a single. When I first played for India, uh, there was not a single Northeastern player playing alongside with me in, uh, when I played first Nehru Cup in Calcutta. So after, uh, after I came in uh, with a bit of luck and hard work, I think su uh, I succeeded. Within five years, we had almost 50 to 100 Northeastern play players playing in different clubs in different parts of the country. So I think that confidence and the door opened up. And also, I think clubs in India looked at Northeastern players uh, and gave them more serious about how they are about football. So uh, and because Northeasterns are very short tempered, they you know they uh, some some club uh, Babu or um, Dada in Calcutta will just say something off and he'll get pissed off and catch his bag and just fly you know take a train and go back. So I think that mentality also changed, and uh, with lot of, with success with a lot of other Northeastern players, I think the players back home felt a lot of con uh, felt confident, and that's how I think uh, you know the hope and uh, uh, to aspire to become another successful footballer that dream started coming in, and then I think now we see uh, any age group. Well, women team, age group, senior team, we have at least five or ten Northeastern players playing in those. So it's, it's something which was really good and uh, it gave a lot of confidence and hope and, uh, uh, and generated a lot of interest in football in Northeast. So that's, I think, something great that has happened, I feel.